If you've ever been to the horse races or visited a casino, you've likely wondered if someone somehow could invent a system for beating the odds. In this program, Professor Stephen Skiena from the State University of New York at Stony Brook introduces his ingenious mathematical modeling system for placing winning bets on the fast-paced game of High Ally. Thank you very much for that introduction and for the invitation to come to the Open University to talk. So basically, um, investing is often talked about like it's gambling. And um, gambling is something people are very interested in. I think that's why everybody is here. Um, <laughs> what I'd like to do today is to tell the story of a um, system that we built, a program we built, uh, to successfully gamble using mathematical techniques and computing techniques to bet on a sport called high lie, um, which I'll talk about a little bit more. I don't know how many people have heard of it. It's a story I tell um, for a couple of reasons. I guess the biggest reason is I was invited to. One is that I find high lie is a very interesting game. I think people will see why after I talk about it. Um, mathematical modeling is a very powerful um, technique that a lot of people don't understand very well. And I think this is a way we might be able to explain better how mathematical models really work and get built. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about computer programming and some of the ideas that go on to building an interesting computer system. Um, this whole system and um, project was done with several of my students at Stony Brook. Their names are listed here. Um, so I, I led the project, but the students did actually a lot of the real work. So the story of this project goes back a long, long time, back to when I was in high school. Um, in America, the big sport to get interested in, if you like to gamble, is a sport called American football. How many people are familiar with American football? OK. Um, when I was in high school, I wrote a program that was a very simple program to try to predict the results of football games. Um, I uh, you know, would, would figure out how many points a team scored and how many points it gave up. The team that gave up less points and scored more points would probably be the winner. And so by building this model, I was able to come up with a program that it very easily, it was a simple program, but it was able to predict the winner about 65% of the times. And this was very exciting. Um, this is a picture of me back in high school. Um, back then, it was very exciting for a, a high school kid to program a computer. Now, every high school kid programs a computer. But back then, it was exciting. And so I wrote a, got a um, column in the local newspaper every week, predicting the results of the games. And I learned two things from this that are important to take away. The first is that a very simple model can indeed predict things. Again, we predicted football games much better than by chance. But the second thing is more important. Mathematical models that are simple aren't usually good enough to help you win money. And so um, what you know, I, I took from this experience was that if you wanted to win money, um, you had to build a much more sophisticated model. And um, during this time, I got interested in a sport called high lie, which they played in, this, in Florida, in the southern part of the United States. And how many people here are familiar with High Lie at all? Raise your hands if you've ever heard of it. How many people have never heard of it? OK, not a surprise. High Lie is a sport that they play in, um, it originally comes from a part of Spain in the Basque country, um, that it's called Pelota Vasca or Sesta Punta. It's a Spanish version of handball or racquetball, which basically consists of two people taking turns, hitting a ball against a wall. Um, how many people have been to Macau? Has anybody seen a place called the uh, High Lai Hotel or Casino? A few people. Why that is there is that, that in Macau, there used to be, I think it's used to be, a uh, place where you could uh, go to watch High Lai and bet on it. And uh, the place where you used to be able to watch it 
and go is the place that uh, is now the High Life Casino. Um, so what is the game about? The game consists of, again, for now, let's say two players against each other. The players have a basket attached to one of their arms. And they take turns trying to catch the ball in the basket and throw the ball all the way to a wall. So if, that was the, if this was a fronton, if this was a court for playing it, I'd be trying to catch the ball in my basket, throw it off in that direction, bounce it off the wall. The other player would try to catch it. And the first person to drop the ball loses the point. Any questions about it? People have a basic vision of what this is about. And it's a very interesting sport to watch um, because they use this very big basket. And because the ball is very, very hard, um, the ball can travel amazingly fast. Um, 180 miles per, per hour is, what is that in kilometers per hour? Um, probably about, is that 300 kilometers per hour? So this can be very, very fast ball, and it's a very exciting um, sport to watch, I think. So if you ever get a chance, I encourage you to do so. Now what makes it interesting from a mathematical modeling point of view are two things. One, the fact that you can bet on it. If you go to Florida in the United States, where Miami is, my, how many people have ever heard of Miami, Florida? You go visit Miami, you can go and uh, watch High Lie and bet on it. Um, and in, when I was writing the book and doing this project, it was also le uh, possible to bet on it in a few other places um, in the United States. But the other thing that's interesting about High Lie is that despite the fact that it's just about a ball bouncing against a wall, there turns out to be some mathematical structure to it. That is, once you understand the mathematical structure, you'll get an idea as to why I thought I could write a computer program to figure out who might win. Um, it has to do with the scoring system, how they keep points to decide who's going to win this sport. Um, as it was played in the United States, you do not have two players in each match. You really have eight players in each match, two players of which play at a time. The way the scoring system works, I'll try to explain it, is that you would have eight players playing, but they would be numbered one to eight. And the first two players, one and two, would play each other. The winner of the point would keep playing. The loser would go to the end of the line and have to wait till everybody else plays before they get another turn. So um, the goal is to get seven points. And the first one to get seven points is the winner. Which do you think is the best number to have under this system? The players start out numbered one through eight. They're not in an, a line from one to eight. The first person to get seven points wins. Who do you want to be if you're a highlight player to give your be best chance of winning? The first or the second ones, right? Because you play at the beginning, right? You get to start getting points at the beginning. But if you're player number eight, you've got to wait till everybody else has played before you have a chance to start getting points. Does that make sense? So. In order to try to make the game better for the people at the end of the line, they do something funny to the scoring system. After everybody has played their first point, then every time the, the ball gets dropped, it counts for two points instead of one. And this gives some help to the person at the bottom of the line. Because if you want to get seven points and your player won, you have to win your first seven points. Right?